Hey guys, welcome back to another Lore Olympus video. I am Dazzling Kate. For those who are new here, I dabble in all things, you know, nerdy, geeky, anything pop culture related I jump into. And I was just going through my other video and I was like, I gotta start talking about the Artemis and Apollo problem. Like, this is something I really want to talk about. Considering season 3 has begun and there's so many problems, I I have to ask, like right now, because clearly it's not been staying straight with the um character's story. Now, honestly, let's rewind back to episode 1, 2-ish, the early season 1, where we get to know... Artemis's character. Now, she is not a big fan of, you know, the main three kings of, you know, Olympus, you know, Hades, Zeus, Poseidon. She's not a fan. You know, they're annoying douchebag characters to her. Douchebag characters to her. Douchebag people to her, sorry. I'm not wording well today. <laughs> I hope you guys understand. I don't mean to word things wrongly. I'm I'm trying my best to like talk about it, but it's just like I'm still kind of waking up and it's been an hour or so and I thought to wake up more I would just talk more. Anyways, um her character doesn't seem to immediately just, you know, jump at the whim of hanging out with Zeus and I get it. It's Zeus and her don't have a big off relationship it's just like you know she doesn't seem to like Hades as much and she doesn't like the the guys in general you know they're just like you know powerful assholes that do what they want because they're you know douchebags I can't imagine her just automatically not questioning everyone in the situation of what's going on with finding out that Zeus is her dad and you know Leto and Apollo have not told her and Apollo has always known and Leto not telling Artemis for some reason. It doesn't add up to me. It really doesn't. It's confusing to me because there's so many elements of the story that just don't add up. And I get it. It's hard to adapt um, myth mythology and such. And I'm not saying it needs to be 100% accurate to the T of the mythology that it's following you know, taking inspiration and doing whatever you want with it, that's fine, that's whatever, it's cool. And, you know, I, I'll respect, you know, the creator, Rachel, for making such an amazing, you know, concept of, you know, the gods and goddesses having a modern-like world in their own little part of the, like, you know, in their, um, space and stuff, so it's just, it's just problematic when the character developments and dynamics just don't seem to work out too well, especially for Artemis and Apollo for season three so far. Three so far. And it's just questionable with how it's handled. And I'm not saying, you know, this is 100% trash and bullshit and stuff. I'm just saying it's problematic because we don't really get much development of the um, situation of what's going on with Artemis and Apollo and how the 10 year difference of what kind of character they were before and after that. And I know, I know there's a lot of information we haven't seen and are lacking. And there's plenty of time to explore that in season three. But it feels like at this point, we, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I think if um, Rachel had planned to have Hades and Persephone's reunion to be more dramatic and you know what we ended up with wasn't really dramatic enough to me considering that it just felt like it was rushed it was it, it got straight to the point and it just didn't really do anything necessary to um accomplish what a reader would want in that and to me as a reader I didn't really enjoy how fast the reunion was I feel like the more time a character spends away from their lover or boyfriend girlfriend whoever in that sort of sense 
it's more dramatic to have him wait and, you know, have that one moment when the characters have reunited. I think that's probably the biggest thing. And I think that was the kind of thing Rachel was really focused on, was rushing to that end and forgetting about the side characters like Artemis and Apollo and a lot of other characters that have dramatically not been given enough time to explain their part of the story. And we're getting to this point in season three where it focuses a little bit on um, Demeter's um, business. If like I haven't really read ahead as much as I should be, it's just that I've kind of, you know, I had this area where I just give up. Why should I wait? Like, you know, why should I spend my money on fast passes only to be disappointed by what it's delivering to me? I don't really think that's fair to me to spend, you know, that money to go and, you know, fast pass till I get to a specific point that may or may not be as good. And I get it. It's like, it's a 50, 50 chance. You may or may not like it. And I understand that it's just really problematic that we haven't exactly gotten storytelling done with major elements like Artemis and Apollo. Artemis and Apollo have had big chunks in the story. Artemis being a close roommate and friend to Persephone and, you know, stood, stood up to Demeter to help Persephone get her freedom. And Apollo, you know, is the fucking douchebag in the story. And I really, again, I wish they didn't translate his character to being just that, like, a douchebag character like that. There are a lot of other stories in mythology connected to Apollo that I wish could be told in that sort of sense in the, like, you know, in the lore Olympus, but I guess, you know, it's pick and choose what you think what element would work for whatever character, and it's important to bring elements of, you know, the main characters to that other character, but it feels like a joke in this case where we aren't given a specific type of you know, development dynamic for these characters. Artemis has not, you know, there hasn't been a lot of scenes with her character where we see her di not, like, you know, not dislike Zeus and, you know, disliking his ways and methods and such. She is, you know, she doesn't like him as much. And then when, you know, a time skip later, he treats her fairly nicely and she's, like, you know, unsure and such. I'm kind of confused about that, of, like, how it delivers to a, you know, how they have a now kind of close relationship and Zeus trying to connect with her. And it, it feels toxic in itself. I'm not going to go into that right now. But the situation is, what's going on with Artemis exactly? Like, I think that would have been a good focus on for a part of season two and a bit of you know a lot more for season three and have like you know I think it would have been much better to have those dynamics being explored instead of rushing Persephone to Hades immediately as possible it again I'm not trying to say again like I'm not trying to say it's bad or anything it's just that we don't get enough focus on sp specific characters and in this case Artemis and Apollo and so Artemis we don't get her development from like you know going from that interaction to this interaction of her disliking the trio and immediately somewhat having a normal-ish relationship with Zeus it doesn't add up to me especially considering he ha like you know Zeus has questionable you know a questionable attitude with Apollo and you know considering he does want to overthrow the god like you know Zeus and wants to take that spot as like you know king of the gods it it's a little questionable there of how this could be handled i'm not sure how exactly it could be handled but i also know that there is more situations we need to get with understanding apollo situation with like i know everyone doesn't want to know a lot about apollo especially in a sense where you know in this specific series he is a um very toxic uh and you know if you've read the story you would understand if you have not and you probably don't know what's going on i apologize about that um okay so the way that he's painted and the way that his character is developed in the series it doesn't really make me feel like he's going to be the big like maybe he might be the big ultimate bad guy he 
because we ha- we've had plenty of scenes where he has been a douchebag in a lot of moments and basically making Persephone feel anxious as hell and scared and terrified for a good reason and it's just questionable with how what they're like what she's trying to paint for his you know story arc exactly what exactly will Apollo do to Persephone what adds to his character in the series and it's very questionable about what he's been doing for the past 10 years we don't get any development of how you know Apollo and Zeus's relationship after the trial went we don't understand what happened to make him kind of you know have a tolerable relationship but keeping a close eye on him in that sort of sense it just all of it right now was just really messy and I'm mostly contemplating about why would they like you know what what's gonna happen in the next couple of like you know episodes what's gonna go on with their dynamic how is this gonna affect like you know the gods and such in this sense it really makes me questionable and I really hope we get some some kind of answers because the problem here with them is that they're under you know developed they're because again we painted not us but like um Rachel painted Apollo to be a douchebag and yeah for a completely good reason we would all believe he's a douchebag but there I think there should be more to his like you know dynamics with the other gods and more interactions with other players in the game and of course how does he immediately become um one of the top dogs in a decade it's really questionable about how that's handled and of course Artemis we don't get to see much of that and we don't understand how you know Zeus's relationship is with the two and like it's just really messy right now and I hope we do get some more information but I again I feel like the way the information has been painted this would have been a better idea to have a Apollo and Artemis story arc instead of you know rushing Persephone and Hades back together in under like you know it it's under like 20 like uh, 15 episodes it doesn't really make any sense to have that happen and it's really questionable about why why rush to you know why r- rush through this we could have more information about you know what's going on in the the past 10 years you know build up those 10 years every few episodes and add in por- more information before you reunite the like you know Hades and Persephone I think this would have been a nice break for everyone if we had focused on Artemis and Apollo's dynamic with Zeus and everyone else in Olympus but I don't think you know maybe Rachel at one point maybe thought it would be a good idea but then you know scrapped the idea I, again it doesn't really add up to me because I it, there's missed potential there would have been more questions answered had she just continued and focused on building up the story slowly and have the reunion between the between Hades and Persephone be built on waiting and patience for, from the fandom fandom and you know readers of the sorts and you know have the time from season like near the end of season two and the beginning of season three focus majorly m- majorly on Artemis and Apollo. I think there's more information that's lacking that we need to get more information about. Especially considering that we don't get enough of them in the series to understand the whole situation of their relationship with Zeus, Leto, and how it all adds up. I know there has been pieces here and there and flashbacks that kind of help with that, but it just doesn't make any sense in some ways that we just skip information further dynamics between Zeus and a lot of other characters only to skip straight to the end and just hope that it works out well and you know maybe the big bad bad guy in this is Apollo because you know everything he's done so far has been a douchebag move it just seems unfair to me like I I don't know it doesn't really have any anything there but whatever I'm just I'm just kind of done with this discussion video. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, and if you are new here, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. And I will see you all in the next video. This is Dazzling Kate, signing the hell out of here.